Are you taking low-dose aspirin and wondering if it's really doing your health any good? Maybe you've heard it can prevent heart attacks, lower blood pressure, or even help with migraines. But is that true? And is it safe for everyone, including those with asthma or during pregnancy? In this video, I'm going to break down exactly how low-dose aspirin works, its benefits, and the risks you should be aware of. And if you stick around until the end where I'll answer these most common questions I get asked from my patients about aspirin. So let's start with the basics with what exactly is low-dose aspirin. Aspirin is also known as acetyl salicylic acid. It's a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug also known as an NSAID. Aspirin works similarly to other NSAIDs but also suppresses the normal functioning of platelets in your blood. So what's it used for? Your doctor may suggest that you take a daily low dose if you have had a stroke or a heart attack to help stop you having another one. Or if you're at high risk of heart attacks, for example, if you've had heart surgery or if you have chest pain called angina caused by heart disease. If you're pregnant, you may be recommended to take low dose aspirin and children are sometimes treated with low dose aspirin after heart surgery or to treat a rare condition called Kawasaki disease. Now remember, taking low-dose aspirin to prevent heart attacks and strokes is not the same as taking aspirin for pain relief, fever or inflammation and only take it if your doctor recommends it. So how does low-dose aspirin work? Aspirin slows the blood's clotting action by making platelets less sticky. Platelets are blood cells that stick together and block cuts and breaks in blood vessels, so they're important in normal health. But in people at risk of heart attacks and stroke, platelets can stick together inside already narrowed blood vessels to form a clot. The clot can stop blood flowing to the heart or brain and cause a heart attack or stroke. Now, if you take it every day, low-dose aspirin stops platelets clumping together to form unwanted blood clots and helps to prevent heart attack and stroke. So who may not be able to take low-dose aspirin? Low-dose aspirin is not suitable for some people. It's sometimes called baby aspirin because of the small dose, but it's not safe for children unless it has been prescribed by a doctor. There's a possible link between aspirin and Reyes syndrome in children which is a very rare condition that can cause serious liver and brain damage. So to make sure aspirin is safe for you, tell your doctor or pharmacist if you have ever had an allergy to aspirin or similar painkillers such as ibuprofen, if you've ever had a stomach ulcer, if you have high blood pressure, if you have indigestion, if you have periods as they can get heavier if you take aspirin daily. If you've recently had a stroke because low-dose aspirin is not suitable after some types of stroke. If you have asthma or lung disease. If you've ever had a blood clotting problem. If you have liver or kidney problems. Or if you have gout as it can get worse for some people who take aspirin. So what's the dose? The usual dose to prevent a heart attack or stroke is 75 milligrams once a day. Now remember, a regular strength tablet for pain relief is 300 milligrams. The usual dose for pregnant women is either 75 or 150 milligrams taken once a day. The usual dose may be higher, up to 300 milligrams once a day, especially if you have just had a stroke, heart attack or heart bypass surgery. So when do you take it? Now don't take it on an empty stomach it's best to take it with or just after food. This will make it less likely to upset your stomach. So what are the different types of low-dose aspirin tablets? Now these tablets come as several different types of tablet. Tablets you swallow whole with water or tablets that you dissolve in a drink of water or tablets that you swallow whole with water and are enteric coated or gastro-resistant. These tablets have a special coating that means that they may be more gentle on your stomach. So don't chew or crush them because it will stop the coating from working. And if you also take indigestion remedies, 
take them at least two hours before or after you take your aspirin. The antacid in the indigestion remedy affects the way the coating on these tablets work. So how long do you take it for? Now, if you're taking low-dose aspirin for angina or to prevent a heart attack or stroke, you'll usually need to take it for the rest of your life. Now, what if you take too much? Now, taking one or two extra tablets is unlikely to be harmful. The amount of aspirin that can lead to an overdose varies from person to person, but contact a doctor if you take more than the daily limit of 12 tablets in 24 hours and you get side effects such as feeling sick, ringing in the ears, hearing problems, confusion, or feeling dizzy. So what are the common side effects? Mild indigestion, bleeding more than normal, and that includes in the stomach or in the eye, or bleeding for longer than usual, difficulty breathing, stomach irritation, hypersensitivity reactions including swelling, a runny nose, or skin reactions. So what are the serious side effects? That call your doctor if you are coughing up blood or have blood in your pee, poo, or vomit. If the whites of your eyes turn yellow or your skin turns yellow or your pee gets darker, these can be signs of liver problems. If the joints in your hands and feet become painful, this can be a sign of high levels of uric acid in the blood. If your hands or feet swell, this can be a sign of water retention. And in rare cases, it's possible to have a serious allergic reaction. Now, these are not all the side effects of aspirin. For a full list, see the leaflet inside your medicines packet. So what are the long-term side effects? Occasionally, low-dose aspirin can cause an ulcer in your stomach or gut if you take it for a long time. If you are at risk of getting a stomach ulcer, your doctor may prescribe a medicine to help protect your stomach. Now, are there other medicines like low-dose aspirin? Now, if you can't take low-dose aspirin, you may be able to take another medicine that helps prevent blood clots, such as clopidogrel instead. Like aspirin, these medicines prevent blood clots from forming and reduce the chances of heart attack and stroke in people at high risk of them. I do have a video about clopidogrel that I will leave a link for down below. So can we all take low-dose aspirin to prevent heart attacks and strokes? No, this is not recommended. If you have had a heart attack or stroke, or you're at higher risk of either, studies have shown that the benefits of taking daily low-dose aspirin far outweigh the risks of side effects. But if you do not have heart disease or are not considered to be at high risk of developing it, the risk of side effects, particularly the risk of bleeding, outweighs the benefit of preventing blood clots. Now, can you drink alcohol with it? Yes, you can drink alcohol while taking low-dose aspirin, but drinking too much alcohol while you're taking aspirin can irritate your stomach. So what are the cautions with other medicines? Now, some medicines affect the way aspirin works. So tell your doctor if you're taking these medicines before you start taking aspirin. Medicines to prevent blood clots, such as clopidogrel and warfarin, because taking them with aspirin might cause bleeding problems. Medicines for pain and swelling, such as ibuprofen and prednisolone. Medicines to prevent organ rejection after a transplant, such as cyclosporin or tacrolimus. Medicines to treat high blood pressure, such as furosemide and ramipril. Digoxin, a medicine for heart problems. Lithium, a medicine for mental health problems. Acetazolamide, for glaucoma. Methotrexate, a medicine used to stop the immune system overreacting and sometimes to treat some types of cancer. Diabetes medicines, such as insulin and glycoside. So can you take low-dose aspirin with painkillers? It's safe to take low-dose aspirin with paracetamol. 
However, do not take aspirin with similar drugs like ibuprofen or naproxen without talking to your doctor. Aspirin, ibuprofen and naproxen all belong to the same group of medicines called NSAIDs. If you are taking them together, aspirin plus ibuprofen or naproxen may increase your chances of side effects like stomach irritation. And this leads to the question about taking aspirin if you have asthma. As we have discussed, aspirin may have many benefits, but for people who have asthma, it can trigger an attack. It is estimated that approximately 10 to 20% of people who live with asthma have a reaction to either aspirin or other NSAIDs such as ibuprofen or naproxen. This syndrome is referred to as aspirin-induced asthma. If you are concerned because you are taking aspirin or NSAIDs and have asthma, please contact your healthcare provider. Another question is related to taking aspirin for migraines. Research has shown that when aspirin is taken for a current migraine symptom at a single high dose between 900 and 1200 mg, it can be effective at alleviating migraine pain. Taken at a lower dose, approximately 75 to 300 mg per day on a regular basis, aspirin may help produce migraine frequency, but the length of time should be discussed with your doctor. Now, can aspirin help lower blood pressure? Research points to the answer being no. Aspirin's reputation for lowering blood pressure likely stems from years of doctors recommending daily low-dose aspirin after a heart attack or stroke due to its ability to thin the blood and prevent clots. This practice, known as secondary prevention, has been common. However, newer research indicates that taking daily low-dose aspirin may not provide the same benefit for those without a history of heart disease. In fact, updated guidelines from reputable sources no longer recommend daily aspirin for primary prevention, meaning for people with no prior heart issues, because of the increased risk of bleeding. Now, if you're interested in natural ways to lower blood pressure, I'll leave a link down below. And lastly, what about low-dose aspirin and pregnancy? Now, only take low-dose aspirin if advised to do so by your pregnancy medical specialist. They may advise you to take low-dose aspirin from 12 weeks of pregnancy. And this is to help prevent preeclampsia, which is a pregnancy-related type of high blood pressure. Or if you have had several previous miscarriages or complications in a previous pregnancy. Or to help prevent a heart attack and stroke. Or if you have certain medical conditions that your specialist will advise you about. So now that you know the ins and outs of low-dose aspirin, how it works, its potential benefits and the risks, hopefully you will feel more confident about whether it's right for you. Now remember, always consult with your healthcare provider before making any changes to your medication. So if you liked this video and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to new videos that are released every week. You can also watch my other videos and playlist Thank you for watching.